The long, short-lived journey of NASA to Canaan has finally come to an end. Exactly one year to the 2022 general elections. It begs the question why it took so long. But will ODM be, go be going solo in the next year's general elections? And if not, will the same NASA heads unite under a different coalition name? The NASA agreement had given the then presidential candidate only one shot for the presidency. And we all know that shot didn't kill the deer. In fact, another shot was fired titled the BBI. But it seems to continue facing hurdles each day. That's why Plan B is taking shape. Legislators allied to the proposers have since drafted petition to implement some of the contents in the initiative. But that is not the only thing that is making headlines. From the papers to the online debates is the bottom-up economic model. Every political function has since come up with its own definition of the model from bottles to a word that is coming close to bottoms. But is it practical in Kenya? And do the proposers even understand it? Welcome to the tipping point. Today resolve to formally exit the NASA coalition. The NEC has further deliberated on the future of the party and its need to make new friends. We intend to embark on a program to build new partnerships and extend the ongoing talks with our potential partners to the grassroots. To this end, regional meetings and engagements have been planned with like-minded parties, and the schedule for this will be shared in due course. The party is therefore dismayed by statements attributed to our former partners that the offer was somehow a vindication of their long-running grievance and that the same was made in a desperate attempt to keep them in the coalition. Nothing could be further from the truth. We still hold that NASA is the past. And to have this special State of the Nation discussion on our last show of the month, we have economist Anambale, Member of Parliament, and NC Party member Sakwa Bunyasi. He's also in the Budget and Appropriation Committee in the National Assembly. We also have Emrua Dikir, Member of Parliament, that is Johanna Ngeno, elected under the Kanu Party, but now a strong supporter of the United Democratic Party, UDA. We have Patrick Ochieng, the National Coordinator of Kenya to Itakayo Movement, a partner to the United Green Movement. And finally... We have the lady herself, Gloria Oroba, a youth policy analyst. My name is Frederick Maitiriri. Our sign language interpreters are Tracy Dawkins and Michael Maivia. We now open our WhatsApp number. That is on 0785-939529. That is on 0785-939529. And on Twitter, at Switch TV Kenya, at Fred Maitiriri. Using the hashtag, tipping point. Now, let's get into it. Gloria, Karibu Tena, it's been a moment. Yeah, it's been a uh, We've missed you. We've missed you very much. <laughs> yeah. It's good to be back on Switch TV. All right. Yes. Karibu sana. Thank you. Ndugu, Karibu hapa kwenye mtandao wa vijana. Asante. <laughs> Nina raha sana kufika hapa leo. Yes. Mara yangu ya kwanza. Mm. Kama kawaida naishi Mombasa lakini leo na bahati ya kufika Nairobi na hey. Switch TV. Umekuja barani, sio? <laughs> Gloria, <laughs> yes. let's, let's start here. Mm -hmm. The divorce of ODM from NASA, mm -hmm. was it a surprise? Not really, not really. Um, as usual with every divorce, you go through a separation period, mm. which a lot of, uh, you'd say, couples, in this case partners, don't want to accept that actually uh, they, they are going through what you'd call this period of not being in the same space, not having common interests, not having a common agenda. And uh, I think they've been sep separated since uh, after elections. <laughs> so <laughs> it was only a matter of time. Mm. And this is actually the opportune time because, you know, we are 13 months to the general election. Yes. We're actually saying in the next 13 months, we're going to have a new president we're going to have a new government so of course um there'd be a lot of divorces mm -hmm. and this is just the first one mm -hmm. all sorts of coalitions alliances any kind of talks in fact even the new other kid on the block one mm -hmm. kenya alliance mm -hmm. is going to go through a divorce very soon actually th theirs won't be a divorce because they've not <laughs> even been officially married <laughs> so i mean this is the season this is the transfer season uh -huh. and uh, we're going to see a lot of that happening although what i liked about uh, the press conference that we just saw from the odm fellas is yes. that um they tried to say that we are walking away from this marriage because it no longer 
benefits us and it no longer is taking us to the direction we wanted to go and in general they were saying now we have this new model mm. and we would like to pursue it mm. so it is like they found a mistress and bbi didn't work so they found a mistress they found a mistress you we, we've seen um, <laughs> that they are very um they're trying to pursue this uh, handshake manenos because we've seen that uh, former prime minister railo dinga is actually taking on tours with uhuru kenyatta to mount kenya and mm. they will be doing like other regions mm. so i we'll would be say talking about that mount yeah, kenya bit in a short while i, I would say that uh, actually it is the season it is the season this is a season season for political divorces patrick yes what do you read through the ODM exit from NASA, uh, are we going to see a situation where these are the same heads who will come together in 2022? Yeah, that's why I'm surprised when you say uh, there's a divorce. <laughs> yeah, because now we're using a lot of euphemisms, divorce, bottoms, marriages, <laughs> people in bed. They had to bring in the bottoms. Uh, and, I, and I would like to, you know, perhaps just say this with a lot of humility. Yes. That as long as it doesn't touch Kenyans, if it is some vehicles that don't mean much divorcing, mm. then it's just fine. Because I think political parties in this country, as vehicles for political mobilization, are still really not at the heart of where Kenyans need them to be. And so if they don't affect Kenyans in the manner in which many of us feel they should, mm. and they don't take contrasting positions, yes. uh, so there's no difference between NASA, uh, between ODM, and whoever it is we are saying has, they have divorced, or mm. whoever it is who has walked out on the other. Because mm. if you put an economic issue before them, they would think the same, they would goof the same. So, and we have seen them goofing. so whatever you know terminologies we use, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think parties take any contrasting yeah. positions. They yes. don't mean much. Belonging to a party doesn't mean so much mm -hmm. in the country. Uh, apart from the fact that 2022 is an election year and parties are the things of election years. Mm. And once an election is done, mm -hmm. then they go back to the usual business of you know making it difficult for. Kenyans to have an economy that runs, mm. Kenyans to have an education that functions, Kenyans to have a healthcare system that functions. And so we are spending, in my view, I think public time in a discussion that is very destructive. All right. Because I think Kenya has issues that we can discuss. A whole third thought. I'm being told that we have Robert Pukose, the MP from Endebes. And Robert, if you can hear me, can you hear me? Robert, Bwana Pukose, Upo. All right, I'm asking this question tonight before we get Robert. Is ODM strong enough to head into 2022 elections alone? Is ODM strong enough to head into 2022 general elections alone? Talk to us through our WhatsApp number. That is on 0785-939529. I can see some of your SMSs that are coming in. I'll be reading them in a short while. But I come to you, Gloria. Is na are we now talking about a NASA that was not functioning, now <laughs> being very dead? I think I'd like to agree with my co-panelists that uh, political parties for a long time have just been a vehicle to take you somewhere. And even when uh, Jubilee tried to form a national political party, uh, party that was actually we had ideologies and they were trying to push it into a place where it could survive at least three elections um unfortunately you can see what happens mm. so i mean as a country i think our our democracy is in that mature yet to a point where we can have um stable parties that um can just you know operate in the party structure as was uh, supposed to be when we introduced to this um mm. uh, party polity but if you say that odm odm has been here for such a long time absolutely but, and they're um, still functioning. Yes. And they'll go into 2022 general election as a party. 
and uh, being there for a very long time is not really what we're talking about to be a political party. You know, we have so many political parties that were registered over 15 years ago mm. that still exist. Do they have members of parliament? Are they actively involved in civic sensitization? Do they have... I, I can tell you in Kisi, ODM just got one member of parliament when we had the by-election in Bonchari. Mm. Before that, they didn't have any members of parliament. So that's what in I'm Kisi, saying. Though. In Kisi, In mm. Kisi. So that's what I'm saying. The, the, the fact that you just exist as a member of parliament does not mean that okay you get a tick and now you are politically active in that space um political parties are supposed to push development of a country through their ideologies mm. and the purpose yes is to get as many elected leaders as you can mm -hmm. but not for anything but to push that agenda that is supposed to bring development to the country yes. so either you're a socialist party or you know what whichever direction you want to go but at least there has to, you, you 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 must be associated with some form of of development when mm. you say ODM has been in um, office. Um, I mean, they've been a political party for I don't know how many years. When you think of ODM, what do you think? What is your first thought? Because I can tell you, when I think of ODM, I think of chaos. I think of what was that uh, uh, Tuesday that, or is it Monday, we used to go out to the street. I think of abrasive kind of uh, uh, politics. I'm aggressive not sure ODM, ODM that supporters would, but I'll tell you would that agree with that. They wouldn't agree. It's the same way right now we are getting all sorts of banter. Would, would you agree with that? Let me ask uh, Patrick. Would you agree that ODM is a party of chaos? I'm, I'm, I'm not a member of ODM. <laughs> <laughs> but but, I, but I know but I know that if ODM is chaos, what are the others? All you of know, them are chaos. When you think of, like I'll give you, just mention to any Kenyan out there in the streets, they will tell you that is a tribal uh, a political party and it is uh, in are Luya. You, are you these calling are Musalia Mudava the tribal? No, these are assumptions mm. that Kenyans come up with yes. because of the way the political parties present themselves and the activities they choose to undertake. Yes. So Kenyans are not wrong to give those assumptions. But I'm saying, back to the point, Yes. Um. I, I hope to get to a point, at least in my political career, where we will have political parties that don't only exist in paper, just so that they can be used towards um, a general election to form alliances and coalitions, but political parties that actually, if you as a person coming out of high school at mm. 18 years, mm. the first thing you feel you want to do during that, you know, two or three months where you don't really know where you're going, you want to join a political party because they have probably, like in you know, South Africa. Yeah, volunteering uh, for your CCM. skills and things like that, you know. Even just now, when you're talking about um, going out to campaign as a politician, political parties should be set up in a way that there are so many volunteers who, if they resonate with your agenda, would just line Come up Board. Yes, to campaign for you because of the passion and, and, and what they believe in and the ideals of that party. That's what I'm saying. I hope that we get there someday because mm -hmm. we are definitely on a journey there. Mm -hmm. But as at now to say that, um, you know, NASA has died and, and whatnot, I totally agree with my co-panelists. Mm -hmm. Political parties, most of them, mm -hmm. are, are vehicles. And that's the difference. What I see UDA, which is my party that mm -hmm. I am a member. You are part... Oh, oh, hold that thought. This is what Kalonzo Musioka had to say. Why is this shocking? Hold, hold that thought. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Kalonzo Musioka had to say about NASA a short while ago. We're actually not divorcing our partners. We're inviting them to a new formation because the idea of NASA served this time, called at this time, called NASA. Now we are looking at one Kenya lies, and if somebody gives me a better formulation i'm willing to listen patrick that yes. is kalonzo musioka he he, he he actually had said yes. that he will then never support raila odinga mm -hmm. what do you make of nasa moving forward L let me say the following things about political parties so to, to tell you what i make of nasa uh, one parties are supposed to be either ideological parties and when people disagree in a party, they become splinter parties. And when people protest in a party, they become protest parties. Uh, <laughs> uh, but for them to relate to society, they need to mobilize membership because of what they stand for. Mm -hmm. And so membership of any of the political parties that are speaking doesn't mean anything. Uh, that's my first take uh, about what you're asking. 
And so in a country where we do bandwagon politics, you know, you jump on the bandwagon, mm. we do six piece, you vote for your ethnic community. It doesn't matter whether you're a, pro whether you're a professor. That every time we are faced with an election as a Kenyan voter, you forget everything. The only thing you remember is your tribe. In fact, you leave your brain at home. So we, we, we are talking about a situation where political parties are really vehicles of conflicts. People, they fight. That's what they are known for. But, but, uh, but let me hold that thought. The only thing does that it, distinguishes them. Does reflect them. us as a people? I'm coming to that. The only thing that distinguishes all the parties that have been debating mm. is the colors they choose and the symbols. You're and there are, two reasons why, there are two reasons why this is a problem. Yes. There are attitudinal barriers that make this possible, but there are also institutional barriers that make this possible. Mm. In terms of attitudes, Kenyans believe they can only vote for a winner. And that has cultivated what we call a two-party system where you either vote for a fox or a wolf. And the wolf will be coming from one of the big tribes or the big clan or the big money. And so party membership means nothing. That's why Kalonzo is saying uh, he will never have anything to do with NASA. And one minute later, because I think there's some, there's some 67 million somewhere, well, we are willing to consider. Uh, and so we are in a situation where yes. th there's really no ideology that guides these mm. parties. I'm being told we have Robert. Do we still have Robert with us, my director? All right, Robert, you can hear the conversation that we are having here. What do you make of ODM finally calling shots and saying we are out of NASA? And Kalonzo Musioka the other day saying that, you know what? We, have not, we are not yet done with NASA. What do you make of ODM just getting out of NASA today? Uh, thank you. And uh, I think I'm sorry for not getting the presentation very clearly, I think, because of the network. But what I would want to say and on matters uh, on getting out of NASA, I think we should, you know, politics is about preparedness. To me, I think uh, uh, Raila Odinga is a very clever politician. He is a schemer and he knows when to strike. Uh, for the past few days, we've been seeing uh, all the media channels reporting on when uh, Wiper, ANC, uh, Ford Kenya are going to uh, uh, submit their dissolution or their leaving of the NASA coalition. And because Rail Odinga knows that this is going to come, he had to make the first move. And today, he called the National Executive Council meeting, and in which he was able to uh, uh, make the map declare that NASA is dead, a, a ODM is moving out of the coalition, because he didn't want to be left in, as somebody who is on the coalition with his team. <coughs> Sorry. He wanted to make it appear that also ODM is moving out of the NASA coalition. You know, that, that's how fast politicians move. So Raila Odinga and his team uh, signed off from the NASA coalition as ODM. And to make it even more Jewish here, they said they are giving a wiper uh, 70 million as uh, money for, they, they were calling it what? They were calling it... Uh, uh, it's almost like a sufferance uh, pay so that uh, Waipa that, and Kalong Somishoka had to respond <laughs> to show that this is what they deserved, not as a sufferance pay. So Raila Odinga is a very clever politician. He had to make his move, uh, not waiting to be caught in the process. All right. And therefore, I think what <clears throat> here is uh, unfolding of events as we prepare into the 2022 
general election. Thank you so very much. That is Robert Pokose, MP from Endeavours. We are having him in this conversation tonight. Some of your messages that are coming in through 07, uh, 0785 NASA is dead thanks to hypocrisy and selfishness nature of ODM. All right. Somebody else is saying, if ODM makes a mistake of going for election alone in 2022, they should be assured of a big failure. The same case to all other parties that were in the NASA coalition. You didn't say your name. The first person was Kiguro. Keep sending your SMSs through WhatsApp number. That is 0785-939529. Gloria dropped a bomb. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't leave this. Gloria, <laughs> when did you join UDA? What I, happened? I have been a member of UDA. I joined UDA. Oh, wow. Yes, a while back. Uh, but before we go to my UDA membership, yes, I wanted to say that, on, well, a, that was breaking news. On, on a very light note, <laughs> yes. on a very light note, yes, this is a divorce. And Raila Odinga is like that girlfriend that cannot be left. Haizi yachwa. Sasa kianza kuona dalili za kuachwa ni kama simu haishikwi nini nini he dumps you i quit he dumps you very quickly and then that money you see is offering kalonzo that is what we call early money child support <laughs> eh yani so that muachane na mimi i don't want to deal with you you know <laughs> so that shows you the character of the foundation yes. by which odm is built on yeah that is those are the kind of leaders That's they have politics. in there not really, because uh, because honestly, and you asked me about UDA. Yes, I'm a member of UDA. Yes. And um, the reason I decided to join this uh, political party is, unlike a lot of people think that political parties do not have ideologies, this is one of the very few parties in Kenya that has got a clear pathway and a clear ideology of what they want to do for Kenya. Bottoms up. That's, economy. That's, we'll be talking about that yes, yes. when we come from this break. But let me ask this question because I want us to do a, to do away with this ODM leaving NASA and the marriage and the confusion and the divorce. Do you think there is a political party that will believe ODM going forward that will say, you know what, come back, we work together. ANC, Ford, Kenya and Wiper. Do you think there is any party that will be willing to work with ODM after what happened today? Kalonzo will go back. In this republic, <laughs> yes, the, the everything is possible. <laughs> and, and in the political uh, context, uh, there will be a number of the same fa uh, faces, you know, trooping back to work with uh, ODM. Because the cyclical pattern of betrayal is known, but it doesn't stop the cyclical pattern of getting to bed with each other over and over again. Using it's something each other we've lived with and we know it's going to happen again actually are you saying are one you saying kenya Wiper alliance, will, will come back i've heard you saying that one kenya alliance yes was asking Raila to join their alliance <laughs> that would have made nasa you know they are actually a, the same a, a, exact a nasa 2022 mm. so and and the uh, kalonzo will say all sorts of things i will never work with who i will never he said he's never going to work with uda the party but he always that's why we call him watermelon mm. yeah is, for, is, and you know what i what i appreciate what i appreciate it is the politics of corn machine but but you know he's mastered it so well mm -hmm. that he has survived the test of time we are still talking about kalonzo msioka in 2021 so for me i think he's a survivor He's strategic in his actions. Um, there might be uh, actions that are of conmanship. Mm. There might be actions that are not uh, influenced by, let me say, um, any ideologies. For him, he just needs to survive. He needs to stay relevant. He needs to um, have a political party that he can use to negotiate as a, a tribal kingpin. All right. We, so, we, don't have we take a short break. We take a short break. We'll be, we'll, I'll come back <laughs> to you. I think, you I, think, I think UDA mm -hmm. is likely to work with ODM. You think so? Wow, what a surprise. We'll be coming <laughs> back and discussing that in a short while. We have members of parliament with us. We have political analysts. We have a youth policy analysts. All right. Talk to us via 0785 939529. Is ODM strong enough to head into 2022 general elections alone? Do you think this is possible? 0785 939529. A short break. We'll be back with more in a short while. Don't go anywhere. If you did this and you say bottoms up, <laughs> this is the bottom. <laughs>
Mtu anameza kila kitu. <laughs> Niliona rafiki yangu mmoja ambaye alitembea hapa kwenu jana anashangaa mambo ya bottom up economic model kwa sababu amechanganya na ile bottom up ya mashindano ya kukunywa pombe maskini sio wajinga kuna wale wanazunguka wanasema tio watatoa pesa wapatie watu kwa, eh, directly at bottom up everybody want to be rich why should you tell people that you want to lead a hustle nation Has, who wants to be hustle at your tacky handouts you don't want to, to get so that 30 billion shillings at kupatia watu wa chini namna hiyo you don't want to hand out and everyone is talking about a bottom up economy <coughs> what does it mean talk to us on 0785939529 i asked you is odm strong enough to head into 2022 elections alone is odm strong enough to head in 2022 elections alone your sms's are coming in thick and very fast odm will not go to the 2022 election alone kalonzo musioka will be the running mate to his excellency raila odinga listen to gloria kinley she's a brilliant young lady kudos to her uh you haven't said that is kiguro all right kipiegon rono you are saying uh uhuru is playing all nasa chiefs he is confusing them for deputy president to win comes 2022 ruto anatengenezewa kiti indirectly all right this uh this one is saying a uh, tr close okay i don't know what you mean by that though raila might lose it and or get it he will never be forgotten in kenyan politics of course yes all right, who else? Eh, ni nyingi zinakuja kweli. Na hii WhatsApp ni kama ilikuwa imesubiriwa sana. NASA is not completely dead. Moses Mulembani from Vihiga. Thank you so very much. Eh, must we have a glory around? They do not want you. Now this one doesn't want you. Umesema wewe ni wa ni wa UDA. Is she a youth analyst or okay? I will not continue with that. Asante sana. Tuache vita, tuache vita ni jioni. They are called marriages with benefits, not the common one, Jacob. I had prophesied Uhuru Raila Mwaja, John Hawk. Asante sana. Keep them coming on 0785939529. Is ODM strong enough to head into 2022 general elections alone? All right. Bottoms up. Gloria now that you are in UDA, it seems most of your, your, your party MPs do not know how to explain what bottoms up is. Tell us in just one minute, what is this bottom up First, economy? a point of correction. Yes. Alice Wahome had a bad day and she could not oh, give that explanation. Oh, dear Lord. It was only Alice Wahome. Oh, dear Lord. When you Lord. listen to Kimani Ichungwa, you listen to all the others, you listen to Gloria Roba, mm. we are. Tell what us today, what is this thing that... You keep what is these bottoms so, that we keep the hearing? bottom up economic approach first of all people should know that it never just originated from tanga tanga this actually goes way back to 1975 mm. when the un general assembly had a special sitting yes and they were thinking on how to restructure um governments yes. and how to which direction governments should take when yes. it comes to public expenditure yes that's where the bottom up economic approach actually came from yes and at that moment they were pushing the bottom up economic approach on three things one is called bpi mm -hmm. bpis are the basic public investments that is basically healthcare, education infrastructure um, safety nets, which is here what we call the NSSF, National Security Social Fund, blah, mm, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, what we call community-based programs. Mm -hmm. Those are the things they were pushing for under BPIs. Yes. So when you say that you're going to put in a certain percentage of the uh, taxpayers' money under BPIs, mm -hmm. this is what we are talking about. And the second thing is the bottom-up economic approach is about valuing all citizens. So we are talking about, and this is now where the Hustler Nation really pushes the narrative. Valuing those at the top of the food chain, valuing those who the highest income earners, valuing the mid-level, uh, middle-class society, and then valuing those who live on a dollar per day. Now, what our current, before I go there actually, the third one is fair systems. Now, when someone tells you, what do you mean by fair systems? We are saying that when you're going to negotiate policies, when you're going to negotiate any kind of um arrangement or services or anything that government is actually giving to the people mm -hmm. you have to think of think of all 
all sorts of people, all levels of people. The, the ones at the bottom with living one dollar a day, those ones up there, and the middle class. So you cannot, and that's the, the, the thing that um, what we are suffering from as Kenya is actually most of the policies, most of the, the, the ideologies or what you'd call things that influence development in this country, mm. they focus on impact from a top level okay. and that's the top down i have so you are one minute a basic a basic uh, mm. differentiation when yes. someone says top down economic approach it simply means that the government sits somewhere appointed and elected leaders they decide this is how we are going to spend money and they push those decisions to the people bottom up the what people it means, saying the people at the bottom they push and they tell the, the government, this is what we want when we go to production groups, when we do this, Hold agriculture, still. and Hold then still. those are the things that influence the policy. Thank you, Very Gloria. Simple. I'll come back to you. Robert, do you think this economic model can work in Kenya? It's working in the US, yes, and we have seen it working. But do you think with the kind of politics we have in this country, with the kind of economy that we have in this country, can it even work in this country? <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you, thank you. I think the the issue that we should be able to look at first and foremost, who are the people who are criticizing this bottom up approach? When you talk of Musalia Mudavadi, Musalia Mudavadi is the son of Moses Mudamba Mudavadi, who and that one is uh, a dynasty. When you look at even uh, Honorable Sakaja, who is a senator. His father used to work with the uh, Puget uh, Service Motor Vehicle. So he has never, he does not really understand what bottom up is. When you look at uh, even people like Natuju, these are people who have never really understood. I, I saw an incident today of an uh, honorable uh, member for Kikuyu, the honorable Amushomba and uh, the honorable member Safula. Safula is making fun of, without really having the basic understanding of what bottoms up approach is. I saw a tweet by the president of United States, uh, President Biden, uh, today, where he says we need to grow the economy at the lower level, that that economy can be able to stimulate what the middle income people will get and what the upper class will be able to get. When you look at in, sim in simplistics, what bottom-up approach means, to me, that's how I understand it, is that the, the people who are being, who are hawk hawking, the hawkers, the mamambogas, we should not be frustrated by the city council. Rather, the city council should put in a structure in place infrastructure that can enable these people to do their business without being uh, 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 chased around the town. If we close, for example, a certain street on certain days or on a certain times and bring these people to the target of being able to do business, formal business, and even be able to pay for a license, that license will translate into... Uh, taxation tax for the country. In addition to that, this person can sell in the morning. He might sell, uh, he can sell mandasi for those people who are going to work with tea. And then later in the course of the day, when people are going back home, it's, this person can sell uh, sukumawiki and other things. It's, it's a very dynamic business whereby this person does not need an, an, uh, a consultant to be able to, to explain to him how it should, should be able to do business. Unlike huge companies, farms, where you, you need a period of seven years to be able to look at your pro, whether you are making profit or not making profit, and whether the policies which you are put in place are able to make the company to be uh, profitable. And if the company is okay. not profitable, yes. then you think of retrenching the workers. All right. So uh, thank you, Robert. the difference between the bottom and Okay, Robert, I'll be coming yes, back yeah. to you. I'll be coming back to you in a short while. Let me read some of the SMSs and then I get to Patrick and get back to you. Now, some of the SMSs that we are getting, how can we Kenyans subscribe to the bottoms up economic approach if the initiators like Ali Swahome, Kimani Shongwa and Wamushomba cannot give a convincing explanation? I may not agree with Tuju, but believe you me, 90% 
of Kenyans, including me, are seeing this bottom up in his perspective. Another SMS. All right, hold still. I bring in that SMS. Ah, is it copy? Is it being copy? Okay, this is Amos Mantina from Narok. Hope ODM leader has already uh, <laughs> has already failed to get the chair of the president, so he must leave the politics and give deputy president the opportunity. Okay. Before you go, can, uh, I, can I say something? He, he, he has hold still. Okay. He has been quiet for some time. Patrick, Yes. you've heard these two people right. explaining to us this bottoms-up approach. Mm. In your view, is it something that is workable in our current political situation? L let me hope I can be clear. Yes. <laughs> this is what happens when uh, ideology is running after the party. That's, that's what happened. Yes. Uh, and when you cook your ideology, the mm. question you ask is how did we get here? How did you get to a situation where there is a huge bottom that is really <laughs> badly off and a very small top uh, that, that's doing more than okay? And, and in asking that question, you know, then you begin to be asking, how do you then uh, diagnose the problem? Because here the diagnosis is not very clear. Yes. Uh, that's why comedy is arising, you know, out of, out the, of it. The, 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 the title. Yes. Because it, the, the, there's a huge transformation from, from wheelbarrow to bottoms to tanga tanga. Yes. Uh, and... and, and the individual who is a presidential candidate until you don't know whether you're talking about the party or the individual or the aspiration that he wants to have in 2022. And, 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 and when you think about this bottom up as a citizen, and I want to think as a Kenyan, yes. uh, as this Mamamboga that we keep talking about, mm, how can Mamamboga mm. and the Hoka grow from Mamamboga to bourgeois or petty bourgeois? So that Mamamboga can, can, can supply Mboga horizontally to uh, a number of businesses that need Mboga or can cook Mboga and, you know, serve it in a hotel somewhere else. Bottom up is not saying that. Because if you look at the value chains that they, they are saying they want to flip and present to us, value chains in this country are the most undemocratic things that you can find. So how is bottom up going to democratize the value chains? Because if, if, if you have one business person who is in milk, in media, in bank, in you know, all these other things, tell me how UDA is going to take away that. We'll tell you. Uh, and deliver it bottoms up or, you know, supply it or, you know, turn it over to, to, mm. to the, to the mm. citizens. Mm. And, and, and one of the problems we have had since 1963 is the Jesus complex, you know, where you promised to finish poverty, disease. illiteracy, and disease. Every uh, time. And then you tell everybody else to wait. Uh, you know, our grandfathers waited and clapped to their graves. Now their grandchildren are waiting for a promise because it comes from Jesus. It must flow from there. Until <laughs> we begin to understand that all these citizens we talk about can turn resources into value, that someone doesn't have to do it for them. Farmers know how to farm. They know how to wake up and go to the farm. They just need to create to be the empowered. conditions for them. So yes. don't, don't, don't stand somewhere in Nairobi and say, look, I'm coming with some bottoms up theory. So that's what we've been doing in this country for 50 years, throwing money at problems. That if, you, if youths are the problem, then you start a youth fund. Uh, if women have problems, then you start a women's fund. And we think we are solving the problem by throwing money at th those problems. And the same people who have been doing this are now telling us they have the magic that can undo what they've all been what doing they all these years. Uh, because the proponents of Bottoms Up were the biggest proponents of the Big Four. And in the Big Four, they were saying they have a bigger antidote where things are delivered from above and they just spread as stadiums. But now they have changed the <laughs> tune and they're saying, look, now we can s throw it from the bottom, pick it up, and you rise with it. Mm -hmm. And so that transition from the big four to the, so now, to the bottoms up is one that you have to define and say, how are we going to make that transition? Uh, 
And does the numbers make sense before we get swayed by this euphoria mm. that this is a magic that's going to happen? Oh, hold that thought, and I'll be coming to you, Oruba. Steve Biko, you are saying, I'm watching from Boston, Massachusetts, bottom-up approach all the way, saying hello to friends and people in Kenya. Jamaica, unasalimiwa sana hapa. Yeah, bottom up all the way. You know, my director is telling me at away on a bottom up. Please, I beg your panel. He's a bottom up <laughs> approach. All right, I go to another SMS before I go to Gloria. My director, if I can go to the next SMS. Okay. Uh, Kipiegon Langat, where is your. Oh, yeah, come and dick and defu kweli kweli. Watch at one. The talk on a bottom up economy is gaining momentum from all quarters. Why? It is an absolute economic model which the hoi polloi are embracing so dearly. Instead of other gangs espousing their model, they are banned on discrediting UDA's economic model. Bring on your own. We will digest it, make far-reaching implications, and draw a line on which is good for us. Gloria, mm -hmm. before I continue with these so many SMSs, I've heard once the deputy president saying that and he was in Machakos, if, if I can remember right, a week ago or so, saying that we are going to bring more money to you. We will give you more money. Where are you going to get that money from? You see, that's what happens when people sleep in class. And my co-panelist also slept in class. And Rafael Tuju, who has worked in DFID, World Health Organization, USAID, all the big multi-level international organizations mm. can still stand up and say, I don't know why we, we, what is this bottom-up approach. That's why people like Musali Amdavadi, who, by the way, was a vice president and a deputy prime minister of this country, that's the reason this country is where it is, can actually stand somewhere and say, uh, what is this bottoms-up approach? This goes to show you that for sure, Kenya has been led by autocratic leaders. Leaders who actually think top down. That is the reason why that dynasty narrative really just ran and took it on. I will tell you for a fact. Yes, when William Ruto said that we are going to put money into your pockets, we are going to do this and that, what they mean is, and there was a question that came from my co-panelist that said, how are you going to democratize these uh, constituencies of people, these production groups? How are you going to get them to now play the politics that you are pushing on this bottom-up economic approach. We already have, uh, and when I say we, I'm talking about UDA, the political party. We already have regional economic groups where we are focusing on production groups. Now, what is a production group? We are talking in all the industries, agriculture, mining, cottage industries, arts and culture, whatever. Think of any activity that a Kenyan is participating in that is creating an income that falls under a production group. Now, those production groups have self-organized, rightfully so, like my co-panelists have said. They have their chamas, they have their leaders, mm. they have their, they've already put themselves into this sort of organizations where then they have those leaders who either speak to articulate their issues or sit in other boards or are supposed to be used by government to articulate now what those issues that government needs to work on at the bottom. Okay. Now, those mm -hmm. leaders, yes. what we do with them, what we are doing with them, because this is actually an ongoing activity, is we are engaging them to understand in order for that buy Kenya, build Kenya that now Raila Odinga is trying to push, in order for it to become a success and remain a success, because remember, buy Kenya, build Kenya has been going up, down, up, down. For it to remain a success, you must address the production groups. You must go down there and ask, how come leather which is a thing that we have in this country. How come raw leather is not exported at the level where it should be exported? Okay. What are the bottlenecks? All right, Th hold that still. Is, so putting money into yes. people's po pockets is not that we will take the taxpayers' money and, and give them and give them like where's a fund in in a, in a fake revolving fund that it doesn't revolve. This is we what are talking saying. about ensuring Gloria, that you make I money heard him and right. have it. In I your heard pocket. him right, mm. and he said this today. Io elfutano tulikuwa tunakupea sasa bottom up. Tutakuwa tukikupa elfu mia moja. Elfu tano inatoka wapi? Enye tulikuwa tunapeana. Hold still. This is what Sakaja is talking about. Mm -hmm. A bottom up economic model. Kini, siyo wajinga. Kuna wale wanazunguka. Wanasema atiyo watatoa pesa wapatie watu kwa, eh, directly. Ati bottom up. Ati atoe pesa. Apatie kila mtu ambaye nafanya biyasara ndogo. Unajua Kenya hii. Hata kama hatuna pesa wote. Sisi siyo wajinga. Na watu wote 
ni milioni 22 million Kenyans in the informal economy ukiamua kuwapatia wote ati pesa laki moja je wanasema watawapea laki moja hiyo ni trilioni mbili 2.2 trillion na budget ya Kenya ni trilioni tatu sio ni uongo 2.2 trillion ati ndio boto map kwa wafanyi biashara wadogo my director you can't be serious telling me two minutes now let, let me read this sms and then i go to uh pukose in just a short while bottom up bottom down is just a narrative to lure the one because but this country needs urgent and immediate intervention not false prophets that we are having only at their own interest a director if i can go to another sms okay thank you Eh, the state will never give Raila the presidency. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Why would you say so? Let me go to another SMS before I go to Mr. Robert Pukose. Thank you, my director. Daniel from Yata, I always ask myself why a big number of politicians criticize what DP Ruto brings forward. Does it not mean that these points by Ruto are powerful? and of helps to Kenyans. Okay. Now, Pukose, member of Endebes. This bottom up. He pesa mnasema mtapea wanjiko. Mnatoa wapi na vile tuko na maloan kutoka hapa mpaka Timbuktu. Uh, thank you so much. You 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 know Sakacha said uh, this is your wajinga. But to me, I, I, I would want to say that Sakaja ni mujinga because there is something called cheating in statistics. The figures he is, you know, Sakaja was a nominated member in the 11th parliament. I was with him. He's never been a member of parliament of a constituency. So he does not understand even how CDF operates. Uh, CDF. In every constituency, we get around 138, 137 million every financial year. The deputy president is suggesting that we can still use on the CDF model for us to get 100 million in every constituency that can create a revolving fund where people can be able to borrow uh, uh, two million, one million, yes, five hundred thousand, five five million, and that kind of figures. Uh, uh, allow Hello? me, Pukose, to just cut you short because my director is telling me it's in a time. Uh, allow me, allow me. Sorry, Bwana Pukose, that is a member of parliament, a parliament of Endebes. Unaskia kahoma ni kama kana kujia kunishika. All these politicians, political innuendos of economic models, are just selling points for next year's general elections where we are not even sure if they can be implemented or even they are implementable. I better support UDA bottom-up model and risk the next five years to see if they can be implemented. Ben from Old Calau. Five seconds, Buana uh, Patrick. Thank you. I, let, let me say one last thing about yes. the bottom-up model. Yes. And I, 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 I worry that in a captured economy, yes. we can stand on the podium and promise heaven to Christians who want to go to the after. There will be no money that will go to any Kenyan's pockets. And we began to see through this. And so in 2022, I would like to urge Kenyans to really look at the promise <coughs> and that a politician gives them. If you know that someone is lying through the teeth, please vote for somebody else. 20 seconds, Gloria. I want to say, I am a member of UDA. Yes. And as a member of UDA, yes. I can authoritatively speak and say, when we are in office, we are going to deliver. And the bottom-up approach mm -hmm. is simply three things. When we say money in your pocket, we are saying we are going to push on the BPIs, the public, uh, the basic public investments. Mm -hmm. When we say valuing all citizens, that's why we are talking about all hustlers matter. And the third thing, fair systems, we are going to push for policies that actually focus on the impact for all. The impact for the one who earns a dollar a day, middle class, and finally the dynasties. We are going to focus on all. We continue the conversation online. That is at Switch TV Kenya at Fred Witiriri. You can continue sending your SMSs. I'll be reading them and answering them on 0785 939529.
The views described on this show are strictly individual views and do not portray the views of Switch TV Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> Alright? Thank you so very much for watching Tipping Point tonight. My name is Frederick Misirini. My side language interpreter is Michael Maivia. And of course, I had guests all the way. This is Gloria Oroba. Sasa ni mutu wa UDA. Incoming member of parliament, Bobasi constituency. Bobasi. Bobasi constituency, incoming member Ay. of parliament. Wabunge kweli. <laughs> All right, Patrick Ocheng from the national coordinator of KTM, that is Kenya Twitter Kayo movement. And of course, we had Robert Pukose, MPs of Endeavors. We were to have Johanna Ngeno and Sakwa Bunyasi. Unfortunately, Mitambo, ndiyo imeamua. Hmm. Tuonane wakati ujao. Have yourself a good night.